Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Starlight Our Star Series Season 11. It is the third game of the day. Team Empire versus Basically Unknown. Well, it's already the third game of the day and it feels like we've had five games. The last game between MYI and Team Empire, I highly recommend looking at the VOD. If you're just joining us, you missed uh, a good one. A good one to say the very least. So definitely go ahead and check that out. But for now, we're, uh, we're in our next game. Uh, a Team Empire very well known against a team that, well... By their standards is basically unknown. We'll see how it goes as we will get into the game. The draft is underway. Again, thank you so much for joining us here on the Twitch stream. Again, my name is Mont. With me is our stats band, Mont Pax, and of course, Blaze. How are you feeling after that last game, man? I'm still hype off of it, honestly. That was absolutely insane, seeing those teams go back and forth. And obviously there were some mistakes there, but that's what makes Dota interesting. There was all, all over the place, a lot of cool th plays happening, and uh, a few next level ones as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, getting into this one, Team Empire have to be a little bit, uh, uh, I wouldn't say exhausted necessarily, but some fatigue will be setting in. Obviously, they were uh, trying to think of full capacity and move really quickly across the map. There was a really global sense of urgency from Team Empire there, split pushing and everything like that. And going into this one, you could call it a warm up or you could call it a little bit taxing, but either way, they might find a better matchup here against Basically Unknown. Uh, I've got to cast them a few times. They replaced Cloud9 in uh, our letter 11 here. And they have not won a game as far as I know, but they have put Radiant up some pretty good fights. Pick. Their strategies seem to rely on some pretty good initiation, off, often picking up the puck or uh, something else that can jump in at long range. And uh, in this case, uh, they're picking up the Tusk for the second time. Magoma played it last time. Didn't really see that many big plays from him. There was one really good ice shard that got them a kill that uh, in no other circumstance would they have acquired. But I I'm hoping that we get to see some really like Tusk-centric plays Ten where seconds, they get to go maybe. for cool defensive snowballs and stuff like that. I would attribute more his impotence seconds, in the maybe. previous matchup mostly to be the fact that they just got absolutely trounced by Na'Vi. Yeah, as is the case for a lot of up-and-coming teams, it's kind of a rite of passage sometimes to get trounced by Navi, but um, it's a hero that I like to see, Tusk, certainly, but uh, I, I've talked with this uh, at length with F4L, and we've talked about how it's kind of like an AoE disruption, but it's it's easier to hit, than, it's it's easier said than done, I should say. It's it's certainly not an easy ability. You, you really need a blink dagger to be super mobile and to save your teammates, but it's not a hero I see, you know, I look at it and I'm like, this hero is imbalanced. It's not a hero I look at and I see a lot of killing potential. It's not a hero I look at and see this is impressive. It's a hero that I think has, uh, you know, it's situational, as is most Dota heroes. But um, they're going to pair it up with Disruptor for now. They have the Razor as well. Team Empire, you mentioned how they're probably just going to be tired. They want this game, but they want it to be done with. They have Brewmaster, Vengeful Spirit, two heroes that are very good about ending games early based on uh, Wave of Terror, making sure that you have plenty of armor reduction. And Brewmaster, obviously, with his ult very difficult to fight into, so... Well, I would contest the point. I would say that I, I do believe that Tusk is absolutely imbalanced. I don't think anybody can use him to his potential. I, I think it That's will the require the Admiral Bulldog of Tusk, the guy who plays him for a thousand games and masters every single aspect of this hero in order for us to see just how broken he really can be but I think that's uh, uh that's mmy or it yeah should sure be. that's true he definitely was banned material last patch in china and uh specifically mmy i think was a major perpetrator of that but yes uh, i had an interesting discussion with some of the guys at the summit some of the guys thought the ice shard change was a buff some of it was a nerf but overall it was a interesting change that gives a little bit more of a skill ceiling to the hero mm -hmm. it's certainly it's kind of tough, honestly. Um, it's a weird ability to begin with, and the hero is already weird. I mean, this is not your typical Dota hero. Then again, though, I guess not, no Dota hero is. But Team Empire go for the Draw Ranger, and, and this is... I like this decision. I think that teams are starting to pick up on the fact that this hero is actually pretty solid, especially in the mid game when you get your level six and you get a couple of wraith bands or even a couple of items. It's very difficult to fight into that draw ranger. I think the slark pickup's pretty good. I'm pretty sure you can dark pack gust off. I might be well. Actually, you're silent, so you can't. You have to get the dark pack as you're getting gust in order for that to yeah. work. But it's difficult. Yep. And I don't think the knockback effect will be nullified just to silence. So that's kind of the. The difficulty there, but still, if you get the blink pounce in general, you're going to be pretty happy about being right on top of the draw ranger, and it's not like she can do too much to you. The only yes. ground target they have right now, other than the Ten gust that you mentioned, three. is the thunderclap, and that's not going to be that big of a deal for reducing Slark's output. He will have minor attack speed reduction, but... 
the big thing about Slark is how good he is against Drunken Haze. Like, you spam out Drunken Haze every time you have it off cooldown, and you're still not going to be able to keep it on this guy. He has a Dark Pack purging off over the the 1.5 second delay, and then, of course, it is up every 6 seconds. So, it's just like, yeah, you're not going to be able to keep him inhibited he's he's gonna be uh he has too good of a liver for that i yeah, guess but dark pick too good i want to ask you a question actually regarding slark what, how do you think is he is he too strong maybe in this current metagame or is he just oh. strong enough i i think he is towing that line between the two but i wouldn't say that he is too strong like okay. he in the right hands is absolutely insane but so are many heroes mm. Yeah, I think the problem is how little that you can do to counteract him. Like, you have to be really smart and draft up a couple of very particular heroes to be able to control him. We've been seeing Axe and Puck do a pretty good job recently, but yeah, it's it's still a hero that really... If there is a hero that is towing the line of imbalance, Slark is definitely among them. Yes. A collaboration of heroes anyways. But the Drow Visage comes out from Team Empire, and they're kind of opened themselves up to that when they picked up the draw avenge already visage just uh, goes right along with that and Dear. has a lot of potential here so uh, i'm probably going to get be throwing out some numbers here i love looking at the math of how beastly that precision aura is with the visage familiars just uh it's a insanely powerful combo but they're gonna have to deal with a lot of various things here they have very minimal aoe damage and the broodmother is on the field the Brood has been picked up last, and then it's followed up by the Puck. No Legion Commander. They banned that out, I believe, the last ban coming through. So um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. And, and more and more often, we're going to see teams, especially top-tier teams, start picking up this Broodmother, especially last. It's no surprise that it gets picked up here. The hero is quite good. <laughs> we'll see how it goes for uh, both of these squads. As Empire is looking to rebound from their loss against My Insanity. Basically, Unknown is looking to just get a win over a team that's been... Probably considered uh, a tier better than basically unknown. So we'll have to see how this rounds out as everyone is picking up their heroes. I don't know. Whose draft do you like more at this point? Um, Generally speaking, I would favor Draw Ranger or Visage Draft just because it's an extremely powerful synergy of heroes. And it's actually very difficult to deal with even at the top level of play. But honestly, the way that Slark and Broodmother are going to reshape the lanes, I actually think that they have a really good shot at it. So, I, I don't know. Obviously, like, if I could just pick five heroes, Empire's lineup is amazing. Like, that's an all-pick draft for you. You just get this insanely powerful team fight, heavy lineup, very high tempo, pushing, dealing physical damage, and it's very difficult to deal with. But I think that Brood pick is the, the wrench in the works, and I actually almost entirely on the brood pick think that unknown basically unknown's draft is slightly better mm -hmm. the brood is going to be an issue regardless of, of what they land up against it and how they play up against it it's not going to be easy to deal with so we'll have to see how empire deal with this here the dream coil obviously the waiting rift is i mean i mean puck is a very good hero against brood mother so and they picked that puck right after kefka picked up the uh, brood mother so they kind of knew that maybe it was coming or they had a thought process or they just wanted to pick puck regardless of what hero was getting picked so Puck is insane for Drow Visage drafts. I mean, the fact that you don't have that much control other than, like, the, the minor slow effects is alleviated by the Puck's uh, Dream Coil, and he does so much work in a lane where he has the Precision Aura buff. Oh. Down bottom, Yoki, is, uh, he's been spotted. He does have a potential... I wonder if they could glimpse it if they go up here. Maybe. He's going to lose Zuri Orb. Zuriji will need some vision now. There's no way. He, he waited yeah, no. so long to jaunt there. That was a really nice leap place to lose a reorb i think from yoki although he'll he'll lose some mana it's it's definitely worth to stay alive so it is going to be the offlane puck coming out from yoki playing uh on the empire squad in the mid lane it is going to be resolution playing your mid brewmaster one of the best on the hero i'd say right up there with s4 and a couple of the other players aloha dance is going to be playing your vengeful spirit we're going to have silent playing your draw ranger or drow ranger in the top lane the last support always want to fly playing your visage so the drow visage combo is real Wow, look at the hate from Always Gonna Fly. Dust and sentries. They don't want to give her a chance to actually hit, like, level 3. Once Broodmother gets level 3, then it's really hard to <laughs> dig her out of the lane. But right now, she's actually pretty vulnerable. They could get a kill on her pretty early, surprise her with some sentries, and one's already on the field. They, they don't have frost arrows. They do have grave chill, however, and precision arrows. So they will have right click. And if Kefka walks any closer to this lane... Well, he's going to stay in the tree. Yeah, without experience. the hard lockdown, it's going to be weak. Venge with the haste rune does harass back Razor in the mid a bit. But, uh... Actually going to hurt the Venge more than the Razor. He took a lot of damage. He's actually coming back around. He has Magic Missile ready to go, but there's no follow-up there. Aloha Dance was looking, but was unable to do so. Yeah. Plus five damage from the Precision or actually helps oh, harassing back there. and uh, It is just going to be harassment on the bottom lane as well. But the Sav is going to be curried by the 
Razor, and he's gonna be okay on the lane. Zero G had actually uh, Thunder Strike and no glimpse. He's only level one, so he skilled up the Thunder Strike first, unsurprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, this is a hero that I feel like only No Tail has played a lot recently. Disruptor has been picked only specifically for secrets, so I'm excited to see what it does in the hands of another hero, another player. So for Zero G, who I, I'm not too familiar with myself, we'll see how it goes. They're gonna try to go in Yoki. Maybe ice shards are not available yet. They yeah, they, they don't actually get a kill here. All they can do is harass and scare him. Try to give him off XP. Disruptor is very good against Puck though, because of Glimpse. But until you have that, then it's kind of an issue. Aloha Dance is going top. Kefka avoids the second Frost Arrow. He's actually taking harass from these Spiderlings. This is the problem. Silence is very squishy. Even against like two Spiderlings, he'll take a lot of damage. He doesn't have mm -hmm. any real tankiness. He doesn't have a stout shield or anything. So. Yep, and so Kefka's gonna kind of root himself into this lane, maybe try to steal up a couple creeps here, though the Hellbreath Smasher is just gonna fall to Always Wanna Fly, and the experience will be split 50-50. Oh, actually, I want to talk about this real quick. Visage, without, with or without Grave Kid Cloak, sucks against spiders so hard. Like, we look at Skywrath as a hero that dies against spiders all the time. Mm -hmm. Visage, I think, is even worse. Like, he is 10% magical damage resistance, and the poison is actually quite substantial and of course he has zero armor like he just dies to those things so quickly and it's, it's got to be frustrating for it's him. almost like every support though when you think about it like we saw rubik i think at the summit just die um, i don't know what game it was but he got obliterated yoki's gonna get ice sharded he's gonna have to lose your orb and he'll just jaunt through and he'll stay alive so all right back to farming silent is having a pretty good time top bottom lane you have what 15 last hits coming up for the slark so uh, I think Empire have had enough of Slark. They, they've played enough against Slark today. Oh, they're trying for it. They get the Wave of Terror. He can't go over the gap. The Ravine, he's closed off. Oh, they don't have the... They have vision, don't they? They have they? vision. They don't have... The trees are blocking right now. So they, they have they to, have to eat the their way through. If they tango this tree, he's dead. Silent. Come on, buddy. You know you want to. Oh, he's going to oh. just walk across the Ravine using his That's spider so webs. Sad. They could have gotten that kill. I'm surprised he didn't cut that tree down. But I guess they didn't know that he was in... Like he's in that clearing, if you will. They but. thought they thought that he had gotten away already. I think otherwise they would have tried everything they could because yeah. that's a, yeah. I wouldn't say once in a game opportunity, but that definitely would reshape how the brood has to look at the lane. You know what I am thinking about though is that it's not going to be easy for this broodmother to escape into trees because of the visage birds and the fact that they can fly over those trees and and kind of just look mm -hmm. and, and scout. I, it's something that you have to think about for later on, and it's not that great right now. Which is you want to kill this brood now, but yeah, that might not be an option. I think, generally speaking, if you think of the range of Visage, though, how fast the birds are, how fast he is, mm. you have to have both detection and the familiars there, right? So, right. essentially, if the familiars are ahead and you dust, the birds are already running too quickly to actually be caught by a single stray familiar auto-attack. They're not that quick. So, yes. I would have to say that, like, they're, they're, it provides merit that they can obviously see over the tree line there, but they have to have sentries already where he's at. If there's any chance for them to to find that opening, I, I think swap is more dangerous, honestly. Yeah, that's true. I, I think the the biggest thing is that Empire are going to have to invest a lot in detection this game, regardless. It's just uh, it's unavoidable in this situation, and it's frustrating too, because you you have yeah. a game plan that you want to execute in the drought visage combo, and you want to be able to push down towers and take team fights with your right click. But I mean, Broodmother is going to try, you know, split pushing and taking down towers on his own, so. It's not going to be easy, I don't think. And Although Silent's getting off to a fast start, if they can't deal with this Broodmother now, who knows how this is going to go later on in the game. So hmm. Another thing to note is that because they're so focused on trying to kill the Brood now once she's low level, they're not getting a chance to stack or pull. They're not getting their independent gold, so this, the sentries and dust that they're going to have to purchase later are even more costly because essentially they're going to be rocking boots and maybe a magic stick for the good part of this early game. Maybe a medallion squeaks out from they, the They'll need an early Roshan, I think, for them to catch up back in gold. And, and that's certainly, that's that that won't be impossible. In fact, it'll be quite easy if they can get a smoke. Like, like all they'll need is a medallion and then the Visage birds and then Silent just to go to work with Precision Ore and all of that. Because that at that point, Rosh will die instantly and they'll get a, a hefty sum of money from that. And that'll catch them back up. But that that's not for a long time now. We have to look yeah. at all the other lanes and see how they're shaping out currently. In the meantime, Mind Control, who was the team's solo mid player for the previous games, is uh, rocking the free farm on the Slur. He is pretty much to the hand of Midas, like 1550 right now. He could quarry out the recipe right now, and by the time it gets here, he will be just like a 100 gold shy of the Gloves of Haste. He's in a pretty good spot, I'd say. Mind Control is, is not having a bad time by any stretch of the imagination. Bottom rune spot. It is going to be Bouncy Root for Magoma, and Yoki is going to have to just maybe, I think, jaunt away. He doesn't want to use his mana. He's actually just going to go back to the lane. Magoma is pretty fast, though. 
He's a little bit faster than Yoki is in terms of movement speed. Kefka getting the soul ring. Down. That's pretty huge. Kefka will get the side shop ring of regen, and then he will have soul ring. And uh, he won't kill Visage here, but man, is he annoying. I always want to fly. He does have to be careful. He has to... The wave of terror is going to be nice, but it's not going to be nearly enough to clear up these spiderlings. So they need some way of taking those down. Coming in the back resolution. side, though, here's Resolution. He does have Invis. Ooh, they have a Sentry. Is Dust is going to nice. go clap. Magic Missile. This could be a huge first blood. Soul Assumption, Grave Chill. That is all they need. Aloha Dance is the one to get it. And we talked about how they needed some golden experience going their way. This is one way to do it, by getting first blood on your support, Aloha Dance. Exactly. So he already had the boots, and then he got 500 gold on top. That is just luxury for the support here at 5 minutes. And, yeah, they're not going to have detection issues any further. That is actually really big. So he gets caught out. Great Invis Rune. The four minute Invis Rune from Resolution coming mm -hmm. out is. Uh... And he's having a tough time in the lane, as you'd expect. Like, he's. The Razor's denied nine times and obviously has a small offensive CS advantage as well. But Resolution getting that rotation at least is helping out his team, even if his laning phase isn't ideal. I'd say it's, it's, it's a little bit more even than. I mean, especially with that assist, it, it certainly helps out as well for Brewmaster. So it's not. He's not doing too poorly. The bottom no. lane, however, is very rough. Yoki is level two, so. Um, yep. I mean, he only really needs six here. He doesn't have to be like the blink uh, max skills puck to really be able to reshape things, but it obviously would be very beneficial. I mean, the broom, the broodmother is level five. So, I mean, that that is a three level difference at this point. Mm -hmm. That That's just, it's that bad for Yoki. And, and he's already able to spread into the jungle too. He gets an observer ward down. He knows when they're rotating against him. And Kefka essentially has like half this jungle available to him now. And that kill that happened earlier will not happen again unless you do get another invis rune coming out. And I just don't see that happening for Brewmaster. Resolution is haste. Oh rune. my god, the six minute haste rune, the S4 rune. Uh, Tusk. Goma, he I needs think perfect ice shards here. Is that? Oh, uh, too late. Oh, he avoids the, the clap coming out with the snowball. Well played. He's going to try to TP oh, away, wow. but he actually is going to live. They're going to chase Got after it. mind control instead. Um, he does have pounds available. He should be okay. Kinetic feels good to go. Split could go if Resolution wanted to. Jaunt ahead. Yoki's being very aggressive, very aggressive. here. Wave of Terror goes through. Glimpse out onto Resolution. Zero EG actually makes sure he gets away. and uh, Resolution's still going. He wants this kill. He's going to get it. Okay, that was awkward. Now he's going to look for mind control. He's going to find him. He could bottle up and maybe try to split here. Pounce away. Wow. Good pounce. Jeez. Dark Pack goes. He's trying to uh, avoid. Yoki, TP? TP? Wave of Terror. No. Resolution's clap will get the kill. Double kill from Resolution. Why this, didn't he TP? That bottom lane became a disaster. He died to two melee creeps. He had a TP scroll in about five or six seconds. Are you talking about Yoki? Yeah, the puck. He tried to phase shift to break their aggro, and when that didn't work, he just sat there. That was um, kind of awkward. Oh, so sad. That, like, everything went well in that bottom lane engagement, except Yoki not getting much out of the void. He's level 3, for God's sakes. Mm. I mean. And they're rotating the Visage. Uh, well, no, no, they're rotating the Drow away from the Visage. Okay, so vice versa. Usually you see this where they free up the mid lane and the Visage will take mid. This is how Clown 9 does it. But in this case, they rotate the Drow away and they give Visage the free top. The problem is, he is so bad against these spiders. It's not even funny. Like... He's going to have a, a tough time. I mean, he'll stay in experience range. I guess that's all that really matters. You see those spiderlings run at, like, always want to fly, and he doesn't know, and you're just like, oh, my God, no, don't let this happen to you. Like, Kefka is sitting in the trees. Yep, there they go. <laughs> just like, he, he realizes that Yoki is nearby, though, and Lose Your Orb can kind of clear them up to a certain extent um, in Waning Rift, but he's not level 4 yet, so that's kind of an issue. That's a lot mm -hmm. of spiderlings, though. God. Uh, Smoke of the Sea coming Dyer's into the mid lane from a Goma Zirigi. Who will they find, if anybody? It looks like nobody. As Dro is rotating back home. The Triple Wraith Band strategy. Good old Envy build, or whoever built this. I'm not sure who started mm. it, but Envy was the first one that I saw use it. So it gives you so much damage early on. Level 1 um, marksmanship is now done, so damage uh -oh. is real. Oh, God. Yeah. I was on fly. Going down. Goes out to contest the rune, they smoke flanked it. So now they're actually moving the supports up to the top lane here to help the brood. Yoki going down! Oh, tries to TP out that time, but there's a hero with a spawn spiderlings right in front of him. He just soul rings him down. So Kefka goes Midas here? That's what uh, he just bought the recipe, I believe, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to give, I mean, Slark and Brood, all they have to do is to spread, delay the game now. Uh, already, Drow Visage is a tempo strategy. It's all about bringing down all the outer tier towers before, like, let's say, 25, 30 minutes. And now that they have the Midas, all they have to do is delay the game. And Broodmother's actually pretty good at ratting it out to the degree that somebody has to play defensively. And uh, the best defense is a good offense. Yeah, this is... 
becoming an issue. Although Silent is still getting good farm, you look at the top of the net worth, and, and all three are, are leading the way for the Radiant squad. So, basically unknown. They're playing well. It's it's going to be tough. Resolution, really, he actually has enough money for his blank dagger. Maybe that becomes um, the go mark for Empire, mm -hmm. but... Well, they also lose this tier one tower, which has been, like, pretty much... Oh, nice clap, too. But... Gives him a lot. This, this tier one tower... Oh, no! Kefka's gonna get problem. caught out. Magic Missile, they're gonna get this kill! Snowball saves his life for the time being. That long-duration Snowball keeps Kefka up and going, but there's the Boulder Toss going in. Soul Assumption, that'll secure the kill. The Ice Shards almost nice try, saved though. his life. Yeah, that was really good from a go, but it's not enough. They do Cyclone him up. I don't know if they get this kill. Clap, yeah. mm, back, Magic Missile, he should be dead here. Kinetic Field's gonna go. Magic uh, Stick gonna save his life, he's gonna snowball oh, again. Always wanna, fly. always wanna fly, getting low, right click, Grave Chill. The, the Shards, the Spiderlings get the kill, and here comes Slavi. Wow. Now he's gonna pop the Static Link as well. The Plasma Field Resolution trying to TP out, will he make it? Yes, they don't have Glimpse up. Uh, and Aloha Dance is gonna die with one more spider hit. Right get him! Get him, spider! You can do it! Oh, okay, just out of plasma. It's a little baby spider, but he it's walks, fine. He turns around, he's like, I'm gonna kill the spider! And then Slavi's like, okay, you're just gonna get electrocuted. What a fight for basically a known. Jeez, that was absolutely insane. That should have just been a completely one-sided exchange for Empire. I mean, they commit the brew split there, but... No, sir. They actually go ahead and turn it right back around. The spider is doing some real work, and... Yeah, I gotta say that Tusk really spread the fight out very nicely. I mean, not like you look at it and you say, okay, well, he doesn't break the fight the same way an Earthshaker does exactly, because the Ice Shards works very differently than the Fisher, though mechanically similar. But when it came down to it, he really used his abilities to appropriately extend the extend the play and get a lot of return kills, honestly. Empire are gonna go oh, into the play. Pit. Yeah. And Wave of Terror as well now. That was what they were missing was the armor reduction. They had plenty of right click, but now with Wave of Terror, the armor reduction is real. They'll do their best to take this down, and it looks like Silent should be getting this Aegis. And there it goes. That's going to be what they needed. We talked about it earlier, but... Uh, Roche early on at 10 minutes in is huge for this lineup. Slavia is invis, though. We catch anybody out of position. Thank you, Strike. Gus is going to go, but that's only on his region. And Silent, I think, is going to lose this Aegis. Uh, yep, there it is. And he also stole 147 damage. Magic Missile on the Slavi. Here comes the Slark. Static Storm going in. Goodbye, well, Silent. So much for that, Aegis. So much for that, Roche. Oh, Always want to fly. Snowballed, how are ya? Dunzo. And they might even get more. Yoki's gonna jaunt away. There he goes. Plasma Field doing so much damage. Nice the glimpse. glimpse back. Beautifully done. Kinetic Field. Oh my god, Zirigi is having a game. Jesus. Three dead. Yeah, Max in the Glimpse there allows him to initiate such long range. The Snowball is also very long range. It's all about vision for this team, and luckily they have a couple of nice abilities that give them that. The Plasma Field and the uh, Thunder Strike both provide a very nice amount of vision, and they're able to get a couple of pickoffs, so otherwise it wouldn't. So that's pretty huge. Even though they do lose the Golden Experience from Roche that goes to Empire, they do clean up the Aegis and clean up a lot of kills, bringing them 8-5. to five. And again, all they have to do is extend the game. They have the Midases, they have the Tricore, they're looking really strong right now. Kefka pressuring up top. I mean, he's been up here for a long period of time just doing his work and sitting at 1600 gold plus the Midas. And this is where I ask you what you build next. Obviously, nobody really builds. Oh, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I missed the kill Midas. Slavi gets caught out of position. Yeah, just stream coil and Bruce split. I mean, they commit two ultimates and get a kill. That's uh, a. I wouldn't say an overinvestment, but it's expected. Anyways. Kefka's not going to build boots. Nobody builds boots anymore on Broodmother until maybe even later on. But what's your itemization for your Broodmother in this game? I don't see any reason not to go Necro 3 here. Just uh, rack it up. Um, yeah, they got two people pincering yeah, in here, so I don't think he's going to go attack. aggressive. But yeah, I think Necro Dyer's 3 is pretty much the only thing you have to go in this situation to just continue to rat it out, continue to Dyer's apply pressure to towers and keep people emphasizing this jungle territory. I mean, you see already how many people are invested in it, and they have the vision of resolution without a split. Yeah, there's the static storm going in. The walrus punch as well, and resolution is more than dead. It does take him a lot to kill him, but they will get it done. Spawn mm -hmm. Mid tier one going down very quickly. They do not have precision aura, though, and they pop the fortification. Glyph's gonna go, and that'll keep it alive. TP coming in. Will they deny this tower? Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be Mind Control coming in. He's actually gonna try to kill always when to fly. Uh, Magic Missile, oh, great nice Shadow touch. Dance though, but does he have the damage? Dark Pact in one, Pounce in two, so. and the stuns from the Vistage Familiars go. The Glub's back! Oh, Are you kidding me? So good. Oh my god. So good. This is why you picked this Ruptor. Magic Missile's gonna go in, but there's the web coming through. Oh, the Walrus Punch blink in. They want this kill, and they are gonna find it. Three dead. Okay. 
I, it feels like Empire getting run over almost. And they got the tower too. But uh, yeah, the precision orb popped there, so they get the disruptor really quickly, they get the tower as well, but they're still not taking the fights overall. Whenever they don't have Bruce Blit, their team just doesn't have anything. Like, they have right-click damage, but they die so quickly, and they're glass cannons across the board. So, one for one tower, down bottom, we see it dropping low, no... The fortification was expended, and the Mask Manus drought will clean it up, though my control is on the hunt. Mary's gonna be going, oh, wow, look at that damage, Walrus Punch, the right-click plus Dark Pact is more than enough to get the kill on Silent. They do get the Blink Dagger on Yoki, and I mean, it's good that they take these towers, but they're losing a lot in these investments, in these tower pressures. So, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's kind of a sketchy situation. And on top of that, you're talking about these Midas's, and all of a sudden, they're eclipsing the net worth of the Brewmaster by about a thousand here. And this is before Kefka even buys anything. He's got a Midas, and he's just sitting on it. Yeah, I mean, you don't really need major items. Anything that'll increase your survivability, since your hero naturally does damage with the ultimate, is gonna be fine. And, uh... Yeah, at this point he can he can pretty much buy whatever the heck he wants though. Uh, as mentioned, the Necro Three is probable. We also seen Orchid build up for a lot of momentum, and that would be very Radiant's frustrating for the Brewmaster in some situations. Does he? I mean, the the Orchid could be. A, and that's actually a good point. Something we don't talk about, but they are going to find Kefka, Oof. swap out, and Magic Missile. That's a big kill. He didn't buy anything before he died. He will buy the Orchid. He's going double Oblivion staff, so he's okay. actually very close to that uh, that item. He's going to have a 16-minute Orchid, by the way, on this Broodmother. Yeah. So after that, all he has to do is just go BKB or anything. Shards, silent. They need a silence. They're not going to get it off. They will get the split away, and now Zuriji's mm. going to get chased down. Soul is going to go. He is going to die. Illusory Orb. They get the right click. Slark going in. Always want to fly. Is going to fall. Magoma does have Snowball, I believe. No, not for another seven seconds. Aloha Dance, he's done. Slavi comes in, Dream Crawl onto a couple. Yoki is going to have to jaunt away resolution now. He's back in his regular panda form. They have no way of stopping him from TPing. They do so much damage to him, but he will get out. Pounce to the high ground. Yoki TPs away as well. And in the end, it's a two for two exchange. They don't get the tower, but the Visage Birds will try to get it. Kefka can't deny it. Tower goes down to the Visage. Okay, okay, okay. They use the Precision Aura again, so that's how the, the Familiars can do enough damage to finish that one off. And... Uh, now they might be hunted down. The Eye of the Storm is really good against familiars, but it's, it's you have to stay on top of them, and Radiant's they obviously move over the cliffs, into the trees, etc. But, yeah, that in engagement kind of went a little more evenly than it could have. The Disruptor didn't use his ultimate there on the Brewmaster. I expected him to just prevent the split entirely, but he didn't drop it down, and he was able to actually kill off the Disruptor himself. So now... In the mid lane, we have the double damage rune up, and uh, Empire's taking a fight I don't know if they're ready for. Again, without a split, without a coil, their control is very weak. They only have damage, and obviously they're they're fighting oh, fire with fire. The gust, but there's the waiting rift. My control, swap out the shadow dance coming in, and they will get the kill onto the dro. Earn back up on my control. Aloha Jeez. dance is dead as well, and now Empire can't buy a fight. Glimpse away. Huh. No, not available. Yoki blinks out. Top yeah. lane, Broodmother, silence on the resolution, but there's no follow-up. So, um, while the fight was happening up top, there was free farm on the draw down bottom. It's not much as far as enhancing her net worth, but she did just get to level 11. So, that does actually enhance her marksmanship quite a bit, also enhances her aura. So, if she's not being jumped on constantly by the Slark or the Tusk, then she should be able to uh, contribute a lot of damage, not only to, via herself, but through the entire team, the familiars in particular. But... Yeah, we'll be seeing them try to pursue, looking for Kafka, not finding anything, and that Orchid's really good against the Puck, too. You have to obviously get the hit in first before the Blink Dagger, to get the Blink Dagger on cooldown, but that's a kill. Exactly like that. That That's, uh, that is exactly what you're, I don't think he's gonna get oh. the kill. Face shift's gonna oh, go. Oh, Magic Wand keeps him alive. Yeah, that was really nice. He he, he should have been dead there, but you, I think Kafka kind of got body blocked or, or something had happened, but. Uh. He didn't want to go too far under towards the tier two either. The nether swap still being up. Didn't pop his insatiable hunger rather, not that it really matters. Yeah, that's probably the the big difference maker there. It's not that long cooldown, forty five seconds, so I think just letting he probably letting the, the small fishy back into the pond, I guess. Yeah, but eventually you leave that small fish back in the pond too much, he gets a Yule Scepter and all of a sudden it's impossible to take him down, so pretty much. You know, it hasn't gotten to that point. But Goma is gonna be farming up his blink dagger, and I can't even begin to fathom what happens once he gets it. I mean they're already mm -hmm. leading without it, and he's played well, but Silent gonna get chased down. Glimpse back in. Slobby's gonna pop up. Oh, there's the kinetic field. Oh, the Goodbye, Silent. 
Speaking of him getting caught out and getting jumped on, it happens again. But this time, they will have reinforcements on the backside. Split is going to go. Slavi is a haste so rune. Fast. Um, he's cycling yeah, up. And that the, yeah, that the spell is going to go, and it's gone now. But jump in. My control gets stomped on by the Visage, but he still kills the Loa Dance. And they have it. Killed Slavi at Wave of Terror. He got earned oh, up. He's got a bottle. Goes. Swap back. He's done. Walrus punch in the backside, though. And only two heroes alive. Aloha Dance. He's not going to be alive for long. Snowball comes in, and the only living hero is going to be Brewmaster. All the meanwhile, guess what is happening? Top Kefka is taking the Tier 2 Tower. That is a 4 versus 5 engagement that goes horribly awry for Empire. And they are not on their game today. Yeah. Uh, well, that is a lot of rulings, though. <laughs> of all the heroes to lose at the beginning of the fight, the Drow Ranger is the worst. You don't get the aura damage for any of your heroes. It's not like going down, just they, they don't have any fight. Uh, doing some of the math real quick, like uh, the current aura provides 52 damage to all heroes. Uh, if you look at how fast the familiars attack, that means that each familiar, uh, because they get the aura every 0.4 seconds for each one of their attacks, it means that they're doing 130 bonus physical DPS. So, I mean, that's times two because two familiars. It's absolutely insane how much damage they can put out. But if the drow is dead, then all of that's gone. And speaking of silent, it's the Mask of Madness on again, the Orchid. He's oh, dead. He's him. not dead? Oh, he's now dead. He's gone. Now he's gone. My control went a bit too deep for that. He's going to shout a dance and try to TP away, and he actually might make it. Dream no, Pearl goes in. He will not make it. Just kidding. That's a big kill. Yeah. That's his second death this game, and it's a uh, wicked six streak. That's Aloha Dance getting the most of the gold there, and uh, 893 <laughs> gold That's picked up right there. for your vengeful spirit because, hey, why not? Regeneration. But, nice little. Be there for them. Uh, losing the drow again is. Silent. I mean, it doesn't change this game too much compared to losing the slark. But. He cannot find farm though. He's 05 and 0. Like, mm -hmm. he's got 100 CS and that's great. And he's got a mask of madness and Yasha, but <clears throat> he just keeps dying. Yeah, they have to have a babysitter on him. They have to at least have the vengeful to swap him out. Vengeful will be level 11 in just like one creep. And when she gets that, she should just stay exactly 950 units away from drought all times and pull her out of bad spots so she can farm. It's going to be Aloha Dance's job to do that, and it's not oh, an easy job either. Or, or just walk into the jungle and feed. I don't know about this. I guess he thinks that he's being gone on because he's playing defensively, but that could have been an easy kill on Aloha. Yeah, I, I thought he would have went on him as well. but Well, yeah, but he has no vision right now. No, that's true. I think he might have spotted out the fact that he was placing that Observer Ward as well. We'll have to wait and see if they counter it. Empire are walking through the jungle. They want Kefka. Blink, clap, they miss it. And Kefka's like, well, okay, I dodged a bullet. Gus misses as well. Oh, Yoki gets some nice farm, though. That's a lot of spiders going Always his way. Always want to fly is dead in the mid lane. Mm. Rip. <laughs> can't be everywhere at once. She can't uh, really... There's there's a lot of holes in this sinking ship, and they can't plug all the leaks right now. That's no. just... No matter where... If you spread out, you're going to be under a lot of pressure. Aloha Dance smoked up, looking for the play. They get the dust because they lose the smoke, but they wave each other the wrong direction, and I don't think they'll take the brood down. Yeah, Kefka has been spotted out, so they don't... Oh my god, he's going to be able to walk right back in because they're wrapping around this. In the meantime, they do take the tier 2 tower mid. That is, of course, the the Razor. And Walrus Punch is going to go. There's going to be the Snowball on Silence. Like, please help me. Walrus Punch is going to go. Shadow Dance. Static Storm. Goodbye, Aloha Dance. It's been nice knowing you, friend. Three dead. It's actually two. Yoki's going to have to chaunt away, and he will make it out, but... There is the Brew Split going. Magoma might die for this, but they'll have glimpsed by the time the Brewmaster... Oh, they actually did get the kill on on the Puck. Wow, he got cut out of position. And the Brewlings are going to die as well. This might be all four of these heroes in the top lane dead. Bash up. Resolution is silenced. Goodbye, my friend. He'll try to TP out. He might make it. Glimpse is going to go. No Just glimpse. kidding. You are gone. Clap's going to go. He's going to try to take down Zeroigi. He's actually missing so many hits because of that Drunken Brawler. But the triple kill comes out for my control. They pick up the gem. He's got a Basher as well. I don't this know, man. This is 23 man. minutes, by the way. Like, he's got uh, an Abyssal Blade, at a Blink Dagger, Midas, and Treads at 23 minutes. It's just ridiculous. I don't think this game is over, but it's about as close to over as you can get while still being at 23 minutes and not having a set of racks gone. It, it feels very, very morbid for. They want to go right Roche. Now. I'm not sure if they'll. They're it's not smoking it, so the radiums are working. They saw. Yeah, they saw the visage walk through, I believe, and they're mm -hmm. gonna see uh, Aloha. They as have well. actually some really good wards up. These are not the the most standard, especially that mid one, but that's actually great intel towards the pit. Walk up to the high ground, pounce, silence, like please, not again. Dark Pact, uh, Shadow Dance, and 
The swap? Oh, oh he might swap, live. Though. Yeah, he's gonna live. And they're gonna kill my control, looks That's like. That's how you do it. Gem is down. Oh, Silo oh, walks back anyways. in. Why Holy did shit. you walk back in? Slavi's up with Eye of the Storm. Always wanna fly. They do buy back on time. They've already lost. Always wanna fly. Double kill coming out from Kefka. And and a buyback. It's like, what does that buyback do? Maybe saves your two, three tower top, but he's walking I mean, he towards thought, mid. He thought that fight would go a lot longer, but this brew just kills people in like five seconds. So no support, no split. It's just it's not a fight. It was kind of a rage buyback. Not not exactly because it was he thought he could get something out of it, but end of the day he's farming zero gold from his buyback gold penalty up top, and uh, he just expended uh, seven hundred for his buyback. Uh, this is tough. Zuriji has a Invis rune as well. They did get a Vengeoris still on him. Now it finally goes away. His Venge is about to respawn. But who are they going to catch out of position? Yeah. They want a Static Storm on, on a hero. Oh! Wow, that's a lot of this, spiders. This a... Orchid, Yoki, Glimpse back in. Uh, Kinetic Field's going to go Static Storm, but it's too late. They get the Bruce split off. Can this be the fight that they win? We'll have to wait and see. Snowball goes. They'll try to bring down these Brimlings as quick as possible. Soul Subject grabs one kill. Where are the birds? Birds are not there yet. They're flying They're slowly slow. but surely. No jaunt forward. The sigil is actually slowing them down. That frozen sigil is actually really annoying. So, Bruce split for a disruptor. Okay. So yeah, essentially. Sure. And I, I think it's, we've been remiss in not talking about this frozen sigil as much as uh, we could have. This sigil is actually insane against this draft. The brulings are slowed down. The familiars are slowed down. These things just, they can't actually do it and non-hero units only do 0.25 damage to it so the familiars can't kill that sigil it's absolutely not worth it to right click it at all and lose the charges so oh, like this frozen know. sigil stays alive throughout the fight and it slows down everything the brewling and the familiars try to do i honestly think that the sigil could be considered a counter skill to the Dyer's visage familiars is under attack. i wouldn't disagree that, that sounds i mean sigil is pretty good i think it's honestly one of it's not one of the most underrated skills in the game. A lot of people talk about it, but at least at a pub mentality, it certainly is. Um, they will take the tower in the, the bottom line. That's all the two two towers four. gone, and I think it's just a matter of time before Empire really want to break the base. I don't see them really losing a fight, um, especially if Bruce Blood is down. If Bruce Blood is up, maybe a fight goes poorly. But if they have Eye of the Storm and there's no Bruce Blood available, I think they just kill everybody, especially with level three Eye of the Storm coming out and. Hmm. They do have a BKB now available for the Brewmaster. That's huge. They're going to smoke up as well. No split for 20 seconds. They're going to head over to Roshan. This could be the beginning of a huge fight. And without the Razor there, this might be tip this might be difficult, actually. We'll see who comes out on top. Is We'll see. No split just yet. 10 seconds. I don't. Th I think they want to wait 5 seconds for this fight. The Familiar scouts everything out, though, and they go. No, oh my combo. wow. That clap coming in. They blow up two heroes instantly. Resolution is going to have to... Look for maybe a split, pounce up to the high ground, my control stays alive. That, that's a fight that can turn things at Byers way. Okay, yeah. maybe it's not as bad as I originally thought it was. Yeah, if you get like a 3-4 man clap, coil, and waning riff, then you can turn things about and you'll watch how fast this Roshan falls. I mean, obviously the 52 bonus damage from the Precision Aura and then a little tiny bit from Vlad's and Vengeance Aura. It's not much, it's like 2 or 3, but every little bit counts when you're the, the Visage here. I mean, at this point, too, Drow is going to be picking up a BKB rather soon, and all of a sudden, you stay alive. Split's going to go. And Slavi was getting caught out of position, and well, he's actually maybe dead here. He's going to get cycloned up yeah, while he's, he's using his static link, and yeah, he should die. That's another big kill. He's down for 66 seconds, and suddenly Unknown are kind of just getting caught out of position and, and dying in positions they shouldn't die, so... Although, they are going to find out Silent at the bottom lane. So much for that Aegis. Actually, I'm back before the can he get two kills is the question. He should. The Silence uh, is going to end. I mean, Drow has no escape. She doesn't have a TP. If Dash. she had a TP, she might be okay. Dash. But, and yeah. dead. Well, I mean, I don't understand. I don't understand. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. They get the kill, so. Oh, uh, yeah. Aloha Dance just... He really needs to treat Silent as a small child and just stay behind him constantly because... Like, there's, there's no way that he lives by himself for more than, like, a minute. And they are smoked up in the mid lane. They are looking for a potential target. That's the Sulk Kuras finished up, by the way, for the Broodmother. But... Damn, damage. Magoma's pretty good solo pieces. kills with the Orchid, building up into the AC, which gives you pretty much everything you want. If your enemy is already missing a lot of attacks because of the incapacitating bite, now you've got the bonus armor and the negative armor for push. Your spiders attack slightly faster for whatever that's worth and uh yeah it's just overall not gonna be easy to deal with this hero 
Kefka is uh, is farmed. We'll put it that way. Sitting at mm -hmm. 15,000 net worth, the only hero more farmed is, of course, the Slark down bottom with Bashroom. Uh, Blink Dagger. He actually... He didn't have Blink earlier, so I think that's... Or he is buying no, Scotty. That's where all of his money went. I was wondering where it was going, but he has double ultimate orb, and he has actually got enough money to buy his Scotty now, and it's flying out to the, the, the secret shop, so... The Razor's 500 off of Shiva's, too. Uh, Yoki? Yoki? Okay. No follow-up, apparently. Okay, he gets the uh, spiders. Easy money. Magoma was thinking about punching, but they realized that there were three heroes in the vicinity that decided against it, which is probably a good decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, Axe comes out. Three birds about to spawn for Always Want to Fly. And uh, just because I can, I'll do quick math again. I'll, I'll wait till level 16 to see how much these guys are going to be hitting for. Yes. I am interested, but... Speaking of which, where's Mopax gone? Are you yeah. dead, buddy? Why aren't you doing the math? <laughs> what happened? You're on the clock, Mop Packs. Not really, but hello. He'll he'll respond eventually. He's dead, guys. Rip. My control down bottom. He's got the Scotty. He's got the Blink. He's got the Basher. He is ready to go. But mid lane, they're gonna catch up Magoma. Dream Coil's gonna go. Clap goes in the winning rift. So Coil used for a kill on Magoma. Not bad. Dead for 50 seconds. Kills a kill, and it will deter them from going in together because he is their controller. <laughs> Thank you, Mopax, for being so considerate. But please, your your window is not very large. Let me put it that way. It's it's not going to block much. You don't have to worry about that. Incoming wall of text to fill half the screen. Uh, don't do that though. Actually, <laughs> I, I'm not. Uh, listen, you do you, Mopax. You do you. That's all I got to say. All right. Dyer's top lane, top rune spot. Okay, resolution. Swing and a miss. And yeah, he's got that gem. He was took that off of Always One Flies. Or, okay, they bought the gem originally, then they lost it, and I didn't see that, but then they got it back, so it's okay. I think they lost the top when they were getting run over like 10 minutes ago, 15 sure. minutes ago. I'll take that. Um, looking at the net worth graph, it's not as bad as it once was. That is a 15,000, almost 15,000 net worth lead mm -hmm. for basically unknown, and a 10,000 experience lead, so. Uh, Maelstrom's picked up, by the way, for the, the panda. Glimpse back mm -hmm. in. Uh, he does have split. He's going to pop the BKB. They wanted to force the split out. Instead, they forced out the BKB, and Zerigi is dead. Okay. Good chance uh, he could, uh, Kafka could catch Aloha Dance out. He does have Dire, or this is Dire Vision, actually, so now it's not going to be, unless at, at daytime you would have had that kill, but at nighttime it's not really worth it to go in pursuit. He did go for boots, he did go for treads, but he's still kind of doing his own thing in the jungle here. Um, as far as the math on the familiars here, because of the drow aura providing 62 uh, per attack, and they, them attacking 2.5 times a second, the physical DPS per bird uh, is right now 155. You triple that, so you're doing uh, like 465 damage per second Dear. with these three familiars, and that's not even including their their stack charges or their base damage of 10. So, I mean, there's there's a lot to bring to bear when they all collaborate on a target that's Wave of Terror and Medallion, but right now we just haven't seen that much contribution right. from the Visage familiars. Like, it's the strategy is designed around it, but the way that the fact that the Razor, and Brood, and Slark are so damn quick, the fact that the Sigil is in the air, uh, it's just the Familiars really haven't been having many opportunities to kill off anybody but like a Disruptor. Right, that's the issue. Is um, Honestly, it's just making sure they can actually focus down a target or have a target to focus down because a lot of the fights are spread yeah, out. Yeah, that's or, the Puck's job. So. Yeah. I mean, Yoki has uh, a load to bear, or resolution even to a certain extent, but... Sure. Oh, they see him real quick. He has a Maelstrom. He's going for it. He actually keeps off the cliffs, but the life steal. There's that damage. They pop the Precision Aura. Global Radius, and, uh, yeah, they will be able to bring down the Brood. You see how quickly he drops he got when obliterated. the math adds up. I mean, he had an Assault Cura, so that didn't even matter. He just freaking oh died. God. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it. That's, that's the target that they're... Not only the target, but that's, that's what they're trying to accomplish with this this combination. And mm -hmm. I think basically I know, know very well that this game could still get out of hand and, and go the opposite direction, especially with Roshan and the way they can take Roche. Um, it's kind of leveled off. The action's tapered away since, you know, I'd say about five to ten minutes ago, where basically I know we're running at people. They lost that fight around Roshan, and ever since then, Empire have been slowly clawing their way back into the game. and. It feels like they're in a pretty good spot now. They're, they're only, you know, down 10,000 net worth as compared to the 15,000 they were about five minutes ago, but... Okay, Ag's done for the buck as well. All right. 
That's a, that's a good controlling item. We were talking about counters to the Slark and uh, whether or not he really breaches into that OP status. But up against an Axe Puck, he does have plenty of issues. So we'll see if that, that can be realized. Uh, it's going to be, again, on the Puck to, to make that happen. So far, the Brewmaster's been doing a great job. The Puck uh, has done made one really good play. And that's so far made up for his early losses in the laning phase. But they, they want more out of him. They're not out of this game yet. Well, what do you do? It looks like they might. we might see a smoke coming out. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see a smoke from basically a known, and uh, this is going to be an interesting little moment here. If they can win a team fight, then all of a sudden they uh, they open up a number of possibilities. Buyback status, who's got it? Oh, there's the Abyssal. That's huge. If they can stop the Bruce split, that's like It's going to be difficult. Fight. They they don't have the true strike that they need through, like, say, an MKB. Yeah. He blinks down to the low ground. They want that target. Magoma's going to see him. Walrus Punch is going to start things off. BKB might go. There's the Abyssal Blade going. Can they kill him? In oh, time, he he's going to pop this, but he gets it off. Beautifully done. Just in time. They have to back away now. There's the Dream Call coming in on the Slavi. Look at that stun duration. Zorigi is actually just dead because of how long it is. Oh Silent gets blown up, though, and they're looking for more. Yoki's going to get bashed up. Phase Shift is going to go. The Brulings will take down... Zirigi or somebody on the backside. Yoki blinks away. Bottom lane. My control. Meanwhile, they will catch out. Always want to fly. Snowball gets him. Walrus punch. He is done. Three down. Buy that kid. Broodmother is going to the racks. He's going to the tier yeah. three tower. Kills Venge solo and takes the tier three pretty much. Kefka is, is there and, and Silent has to buy back. He can even go in onto Silent now without. He can go with Reckless Abandon. There's no Bruce split and they have backup coming in. Kefka is going to work yeah, on the tier three. They're waiting for the blink Walrus punch, but uh, they don't get the range on it. I, I uh, think. Okay, there's the buyback from Aloha Dance, but it, I mean, they deny the tier 3 tower. They could keep going, honestly. There's no Bruce split. They have no puck for 37 seconds. I'm not sure why they don't. Well, I mean, there are risks going that deep into the base against a level 17 Venge. I mean, she wow. has the max swap. She's got, actually really surprised she's that high of level. Yeah. But, yeah, the max swap is very scary and uh, could be pulled under tier 4s, and any stun would screw you over at that point in time. So um, there are risks, and uh, they're happy with just getting buybacks. I mean, they destroyed that fight. Razor kills all three familiars and gets a huge bounty, and they force those buybacks. They don't need more than that. The only way that fight could have gone better is if Resolution had died early on, but uh, they probably wouldn't have committed to that fight had Resolution gone down. So. Sure. Empire are now in a position where they realize that even with Split, they could still lose fights. Silence walking very far forward, and he does not have Aloha Dance to help out. He's walking towards him, but... If Kefka had gone now, in fact, he is going, but... <laughs> That's just being annoying, I think. He's playing Spiderlings games. and Orchid, let's go. That's all he's going to do. Double damage down to the bottom rune spot. They could pick it up if Magoba wants to, but... Okay, all right. It's it's uh, it's getting to be that, that, that situation where... They know... Yeah, Kefka is actually going to get spotted here. They know he's here. He's dead. Match Missile. Goodbye, Kefka. Empire, kind of a, a comeback crew here because they have had historical games where they are able to dig themselves out of the trenches, but this is this is bad. This is really bad news. I mean, obviously that the strat works. There's a lot of potential. You'll see how fast Roche will drop when, when a second Drow enters the pit. The, the damage per second on this Roshan just They're going to get Roshan, but is there going to be a fight afterwards? Aegis, is he going to get picked up? I mean, no, it's going to get picked up by Silent. He will lose his life more than likely. He will be respawning momentarily. Meanwhile, the Brulings in the pit having some trouble. Static Link going through. BKB pops. Abyssal Blade used as well. Silent go, trying to go. fight up as best as possible. Only one dead. It's the Broodmother. He's still dead from before. They will pick up Silent now, finally. On the back end, Aloha Dance. Kinetic field it up. My control is stunned as well. They pick up the kill on the Brewmaster. That's huge. Aloha Dance is in some trouble. He's going to fall. Yoki is going to jaunt away. Oh, that was maybe not the right direction to go towards. But now, always when a fly comes in, Soul Assumption, not enough damage to pick up a kill. Up in the air, great Yule Scepter. Slavi still chasing after a hero. Walrus punch going in. Yoki's going to have to jaunt up to the high ground. Oh, and Slavi knows. Oh, Chop, get out of here. Yoki's going to get right click down. Slavi with the plays. Yeah, nice mind games coming out from your puck. Or rather, excuse me, your razor. Dro did have cheese and did use it, apparently. That's unfortunate. Yeah, she she had uh, the cheese, she had the Aegis, she used the Aegis, she doesn't use the cheese. It doesn't matter at this point, they just can't do anything. The Shiva's Yard is reducing everybody's attack speed, so they really aren't benefiting the Drower. That includes the Familiars, and they're just having a really bad time. The Agadims, the Butterfly up for Razor, so he clears out those towers quickly, and my Control just walks right into the enemy base. No problem at all. And they're going to take down a set of racks, if not two, at this point. They have no real way of defending this. Slavi will take one. 
They'll shadow dance, I believe, and take the second. And uh, that's the beginning of the end. They could even take Mega Creeps here. And no GG has been called yet, but for all its intents and purposes, if uh -huh. they take this set of racks down, it's, it's I think, over. As Kefka is oh, going to work, and it's been I mean, a good fight for Empire, but it's just Silent has died too many times to be effective. He has died a lot of times. They've counteracted these familiars in a lot of different ways. Uh, and they just, yeah, in general have taken uh, the kill advantage and power advantage over a tempo lineup. That's just strategically a huge win for them. The blink out from the tusk? No, he doesn't have it off cooldown. Tried to actually go for a save play there. Was, Anyways, was, the, uh, was the Razor not in range of Snowball? I'm pretty sure that would have, would have been the case because he couldn't get in the Snowball for whatever reason. Anyways, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, I, it's interesting, but he did go try to go for a save play, and I don't know, he didn't get the right-click radius or That's something else happened. Maybe there were too many units. He click disabled help or something, who knows. But, yeah, in this position, it's just Empire strategically had to be taking towers very early. They took all the Tier 1s, but at 40 minutes, they haven't taken a single Tier 2. Um, they've taken a lot of Roches, which I guess is fine, but they aren't actually suppressing Team Unknown, who are the ones who went greedy. They're the ones with the Tricor with two Midases. Well, not two anymore, since Brood so farmed that she actually sold her hand to Midas, but she did have one originally. This is, uh... It's become a, a situation where Empire are again behind, and, and it feels like there's nothing they can do at this point with two sets of Rexes down and a third exposed. They'll try their best to find a hero out of position, specifically Kefka, who's already rotated up top lane. But one more team fight in this game is GG. Uh, it's just a, it's just a matter of time, I think, before mm. Empire, and that's even a BKB now up at the Tusk as well. So I feel it was just a bit of a gambit that didn't work out in this case. Like like I said, I feel like Drow Vistas is really powerful when it's not countered. But there was literally only one time the familiars actually got to like made the impact that you would expect from them. That was the kill with Brewmaster on the. Uh, Broodmother up towards the top rune. Uh, other than that, they really haven't done hardly anything other than uh, pinpricking a few towers in a way that many heroes could. I mean, if you had, like, for example, a Jakiro instead of a Visage here, you know you wouldn't have the Drought Visage sy synergy, but you would have a way to deal with all those spiders in the early game, and the landing phase would have been very different, but the Brood pick was just so smart, and yeah, they wouldn't break out. Silent. Got a Manta out of any real harm here. Resolution still has his ultimate ready. Magoma popped his BKB. They haven't killed anybody yet. Everyone's taking a lot of damage, but no one's actually dead. Slav is coming through. Yoki's going to pop the Dream Quill. Static Storm's going to go. Glimpse is on cooldown, so they can't really do anything about this. All the meanwhile, guess what's happening top lane? Uh, say goodbye <laughs> to your axes. Uh, they're going to TP here all back goes home, down but... thanks to the extremely long Dream Coil, and then when he blinks out, the extremely long Dream Coil is done, but lol at your base. Split. This means nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, what are they doing here? They're still tier two towers. They can maybe go for this tier three bottom, but they, the, the game they have pretty much just said, "Let's get some kills," because they know it's over. Aloha Dance is getting right clicked down. Resolution does get a double kill. Kefka's gonna TP home, and we'll make it out alive. And... Okay, good fight, friends. Resolution. Oh, okay. You'll live. Nice blink. Nice TP. Um. All right. Well. <laughs> Well, I mean, they did what they could, right? I mean, they were able to take some fights here and there. The splits were uh, actually very impactful, getting the BKB, obviously really good against the Disruptor. So I think Resolution played a really good game. And towards the, the, the second half, Yoki actually really stepped it up as well. But it was just the, the fact that Aloha Dance and Silent really weren't on the same page as far as farm routes. There were so many times they got picked off when they didn't need to be. Resolution playing well always seems to be the case. I don't... It's just... It's his thing. Um... And Yoki and Resolution have played well throughout these games, and it just feels like they're 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 missing a little bit. Silent with this draft, Silent has not played particularly well. The draft wasn't that great, I think. I mean, obviously draft is just very good, but they, I think they got out drafted somewhat because of this Broodmother pick, and then on yeah. top of that, uh, they just kind of they figured out a way to deal with these these Visage birds. And honestly, I really like the the. I thought the Tusk first pick was kind of questionable, but it has paid off uh, yeah, yeah. in a lot of I ways. I think there were a lot of understated aspects to the pick, but it definitely, it's not just about picking five melee heroes and snowballing them onto one hero. Right, it's, right. There's a lot more to this individual, and yes. uh, with the plays that he made, he got a couple kills by pulling somebody out with ice shards. He's gotten some really good micro of the sigil, which is, it's hard to like, be like play by play commentating that, but the impact is and pretty understated, and uh, that's obviously a, a really good powerful ability, and other than that, just control, helping control, initiate with the walrus punch. At least a setup stun to follow through with other things. It's just worked out really well. Here. 
Uh, they walk right past Resolution. That is not their target that they're going for. They're going to Walrus Punch. They're going to find one. They're going to Abyssal Silent. He's going to get caught out, and he's dead. Aloha Dance is going to be the next to fall. Yoki is Yule Scepter up in the air. Zuriji might die here without getting too much off, but they've already lost four heroes. And Resolution just pieces out and says, like, GG. Guys, I'm going home. Yeah, he's exactly. Got his, uh, kill it with Fire Build with the Battle Fury Mjolnir, and it'll take out all the spiders he wants. Regardless, that's going to be the end of this third game, and don't worry, we still have more action heading your way, guys, as uh, Starletter EU continues onwards, and I, I guess two relatively lesser-known teams taking games off of Empire, a team that's considered at least Tier 2, um, if not Tier 1. And not, not super surprising for the MYI game, but this game, basically unknown, are not going to be basically unknown for much longer, it feels like. Yeah, I mean, this was their their first, like, legit win, I think, in Star Ladder, so that's really nice. They're playing all the games they can uh, to try to get more exposure and maybe have to change their team name eventually, but uh, I guess they'll just take the UN away. In either case, uh, I really do think that they, one aspect of the draft is that Broodmother and how they were really inflexible in dealing with it. I think that teams that are progressing in their drafters, or drafters that are evolving in this metagame, have to just always look at your fifth band and say, just don't even look at their team, don't even look at the synergies, just say, can we deal with Broodmaster, uh, Broodmother? If the answer is no, just ban the Broodmother. That's something that we've seen a lot from Team Secret, a couple times from Na'Vi, and I'm hoping that more teams will start doing, because plain and simple, that hero can redefine the game as we see here. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. So, well, that'll be the end of this game, but don't you worry, we have two more games, I believe, on tap. I believe it's two more games. The next game, Alliance versus Hellraisers. We'll see how that does pan out in just a little while. Uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with that game shortly. But before we do go, make sure you guys check us out on Twitter, of course. We've been casting all morning. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the action. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the commentary. Make sure you check us out at Twitter.com slash ModDota, Twitter.com slash BlazeCaster for Blaze, my co-caster, and, of course, for StatsBand, ModPacks. You can check them out at Twitter.com slash ModPacks. So, well, we'll see you all in just a bit. Stick around, everybody.